Welcome to Caregiver Connection. I'm Susan Rush with the Council on Aging in Union County and I am their family caregiver support specialist. <laughs> and uh, basically that means I'm a social worker who tries to uh, support caregivers in their role, making sure that they are taking care of themselves, showing self-compassion, doing um, what's needed in order to prevent burnout. And we do that through support groups, um, starting uh, recently little videos like this just to provide education and then also through different resources and um, so if you're in need and you live in Union County I've got my phone number there in the description so don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, today though what I'm going to share is how do we kick those wintertime doldrums you know the wintertime blues and uh, some of you may have heard about Seasonal Affective Disorder, AKA SAD. I think the acronym is um, very uh, descriptive. But uh, you know, how do we get through these uh, hard months of winter? And so that is obviously, um, you know, I think relevant for everyone, not just caregivers. So, you know, when we think about what causes us to be sad in the winter months, I think it's um, pretty common sense that, you know, the, the weather's cold, often it's grayer skies, shorter days. And with that, uh, with the shorter days, our body increases more melatonin. And you know, melatonin is that hormone that makes us sleepy. A lot of people take melatonin to sleep, obviously. But uh, as your melatonin, as your body produces more melatonin, your serotonin goes down because serotonin is the neurotransmitter that helps produce melatonin. So it's kind of like a perfect storm. Your serotonin is going down, which you know is a feel-good hormone, and if you have low serotonin, you're more um, prone to depression and uh, anxiety. So that hormone is going down, your sleepy hormone's going up. <laughs> so, so again, it's kind of the perfect storm. So how can we um, how can we change this, prevent this, or at least do better so that we can still enjoy these winter months? So first what I want to do is speak to why is our melatonin higher in the winter? And it's because our normal circadian rhythm is altered. It's changed in that, um, you know, in our circadian rhythm is the natural wake sleep cycle. And so when your natural wake sleep cycle is disrupted because of shorter days and it's getting dark earlier, um, that natural rhythm is out of whack and so then your body compensates by making more melatonin. So with the disruption in the circadian rhythm, what can we do to change that? And one of the things, in fact, I think it was probably in the 70s and 80s, a lot of physicians were actually writing prescriptions for light boxes. And you may have heard of those. They, um, you can get them on Amazon for as little, I think it's like $130, $140, but you can get the full body ones that go up to 3,000. And I can't, I'm not an expert, so I can't speak to uh, the benefit of the full body, if that would be worth the money. But uh, the important thing is it has to be ultraviolet B light um, because that's what's, what's going to help you produce vitamin D. So uh, just think about that. Um, from what I understand, uh, ideally you would do 20 to 30 minutes in front of your light box um, every day and studies have shown that that really does help um, decrease that melatonin and uh, increase the vitamin D. And vitamin D we need uh, to help produce serotonin and that, um, you know, in the summer obviously we get that more from just being outside. So that kind of helps, the light box helps compensate, um, you know, for that loss of daylight hours. But you know, when I was thinking about this, um, all kinds of light really, um, you know, it doesn't have the same physical effect maybe, but I think emotionally when we have lamp light, and I've spoken about this before, it's just um, so soothing. And um, you know, I think about Thomas Kincaid, the painter of light. Some of y'all may have his artwork hanging in your homes, but I saw him interviewed one time and he said that he did that very intentionally because to him, when you see light from within a home and that lamp light, it just, kind of uh, stirs those feelings of nostalgia, warmth, uh, a feeling of safety. And so um, he said that's why he thinks one of, um, one of the reasons that his paintings became so famous because they just get, give people that warm, fuzzy feeling. And um, also I had a lady one time in a support group tell me that, um, you know, she was really feeling um, depressed when she got home at night, especially in the winter months because it was dark, it was dreary, and she was actually a widow. And she said going into a house all by herself was just depressing. 
And so we talked about it and she started uh, leaving lamplight on and even leaving her blinds tilted. So when she pulled into the driveway, there was just this feeling of, um, of warmth and this is my home and you know, just those, um, those feel good hormones are, are increased when we have all of those feelings. So uh, just something to think about, use uh, more lamp light. Another thing I wanted to touch on is the power of music. And as I could move through this, you'll notice that it's really um, important just to uh, use all of our five senses in trying to uh, decrease depression and anxiety, not just during the winter, but anytime. And countless studies have shown that the music you listen to and just listening to music can uh, decrease anxiety, helps fight sadness and depression. And um, there was actually a very famous study by Lumner and Heienberger. I hope I'm saying their names right. They actually, over years, you can look them up online if you choose to, but they did 28 studies with over almost 2,000 participants. And uh, what they found was um, that the, their analysis produced highly convincing results that music is a treatment to improve depressive symptoms. And, um, you know, they did, um, studies where they did longitudinal studies, which means over the course of a long period of time, monitoring people with and without music. And then they did some in um, experimental studies, like in a lab, watching behaviors. So I don't have time to go into all of that, but it's really fascinating. But, uh, and they also found that it not only uh, decreases anxiety and depression, but incre it increases restorative rest at night, which kind of goes hand in hand. It improves your heart health and your verbal skills. So listening to music is important. And they found too that it wasn't so much, okay, you need to listen to calm music in the evening, upbeat music in the morning. That's what I always thought and what I do. But they said it's uh, equally important just to choose music that you like, which I guess is common sense. Nobody's gonna feel calm if they're, if they're not a country fan and that's what's playing. So just think about um, the music though and, uh, and uh, try to enjoy that more. Um, so another thing is, I'm gonna call it flower power, and I've recently uh, discovered how um, therapeutic it is to have real plants in each of the rooms of my house. I know I'm probably late to the party with that, but uh, studies, um, a study by Dr. Epcoff with Harvard University, or Harvard Medical School, showed that when fresh cut flowers are in a room, people are less anxious, depressed, and showed more compassion towards others. And uh, so he studied the fresh cut flowers as well as live plants. And uh, the same, uh, I'm sorry, a different study, but still at Harvard, showed that live plants provide a boost of energy and increased happiness because there's um, bacterium in the plant's soul that triggers a release of serotonin. So that's why I think a lot of us who love to garden are so happy in the spring because we got our hands in our dirt, in the dirt, and it's just not, um, you know, an emotional feel good. There truly is a physical reason because uh, that bacterium is being released and our serotonin goes up. So I just find that fascinating. And there was yet another study at Harvard uh, focusing on just fresh cut flowers. So Dr. Nancy Etkoff. Um, came to a lot of conclusions, and hers were that flowers evoke feelings of compassion. Uh, she showed that uh, people who had fresh cut flowers in their home felt, um, showed through a questionnaire that they did, they show more kindness to others. And of course they're asking not just are you kind, but different questions where they can gauge a person's kindness and compassion. And those scores were higher if they had fresh cut flowers. <laughs> it's just amazing to me. But you know, it's also very common sense because we know when we have, somebody gives us flowers, especially or we buy them for ourselves, you know, it's just a little pick me up. Um, but uh, she also found that flowers give people a physical and psychological lift and obviously rel relieve the blues and especially the wintertime blues. So, um, okay, hopefully I convinced you that you need to have real plants, live plants and fresh cut flowers. Um, Another thing is what we are smelling. Um, and so, again, I'm kind of late uh, joining the bandwagon on essential oils. Just the last couple years, I've uh, been doing that with a diffuser. But um, <clears throat> studies definitely show that um, those scents really do help improve our, our mood and decrease depression. But this is one of my favorite studies. <laughs> um, it was conducted by Haviland Jones. 
And what they did, this was actually in a lab setting, and they had um, a controlled group that uh, was just in a room um, with, with no um, scents or um, aromatherapy, and then one with um, aromatherapy, and it was a floral scent. The interesting thing was, it wasn't a detectable level, but uh, it was still in that room. And then they had a mime who went into each room. And so after the mime went into each room and walked around, I don't know what all he did, but then the researchers had the um, participants describe the mime. Okay, so the people who were in the room with the floral scent, they described the mime uh, with more uh, kind words. They seemed to enjoy him more. People who didn't have that floral scent um, were more negative. So according to their questionnaire afterwards, 74% in the room with the floral scent uh, said that the mind made them feel happier and friendlier. In fact, they also showed through their behavior, the people in the room with the floral scent would actually approach the mind and, and, and get in closer proximity and a couple even touched him. In the room without the aromatherapy, they stayed in their seats. <laughs> I don't know, I just think that's so interesting. And if essential oils just isn't your thing, then certainly, you know, scented candles, uh, there's a lot of ways just to get your home uh, smelling good to help uh, increase those um, positive neurotransmitters. Studies have shown that the, um, the fragrances that are most beneficial are lavender, jasmine, basil, all three of those really increase uh, not only serotonin, but also dopamine. Um, so I think I saved the best for last, and that is what we eat. <laughs> uh, I mean, we all know that eating our green leafy be vegetables is important, and just eating um, uh, colorful vegetables and decreasing carbs, decreasing sugar, all of that's very important. So, um, but for me, the best news is one of the best things to eat to increase endorphins like serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin is dark chocolate. And I know some of y'all are familiar. Uh, and of course, it's supposed to be in moderation. That may be a challenge for you. It certainly is for me. But just having some uh, dark chocolate can uh, increase those feel-good hormones. And so just give yourself a treat each day and uh, see if that, that helps. And also, as far as our diet, um, one thing in the winter I think that a lot of us find comfort in uh, is stews, you know, slow cooker recipes or um, just things that are um, savory and uh, studies have shown that, uh, that those definitely do uh, make us feel better, which is common sense, you know, they, they're called the, the feel good kind of uh, home cooked meals, home cooked stews and soups. Uh, just give us that warm feeling. So overall, keeping a routine during the winter is important. You know, even if you're retired and you're not having to get up, sometimes setting an alarm just so you can stay in a normal uh, wake sleep cycle, going to bed at about the same time every evening. Uh, obviously having hobbies, things that you enjoy doing during the day. And I know if you're a caregiver, sometimes that can be challenging, but just carving out time um, to do something that you enjoy, you know, just showing that self-compassion. Maybe it's a long bath, um, maybe it's just uh, going for a, a quick stroll, just wrapping up and staying warm and going outside. Um, and also brain stimulating activities, whether that's word puzzles or uh, zigzag puzzles or, or watching, um, you know, trivia games, just things to um, for us to be intentional about keeping our minds active. Because sometimes I think it's easy, it certainly is for me, uh, if I'm not working, uh, to kind of binge Netflix, you know, climb under a, a comfy blanket and just kind of veg and, and binge on TV. And that's certainly not bad. You know, that can be self-compassion as well if you do it in moderation. Um, but, uh, you know, try to uh, keep a routine and, and to stay as active as possible. So in closing, I just want to share what I did um, in the um, year that I was caring for my mom was specifically during the winter months. It was during quarantine, the peak of quarantine, and uh, it, was, it was hard not to get depressed and not to feel anxious in the middle of the night, not knowing the future. And I know some of you caregivers, um, I've been there. I can't say I know your exact path and what you're struggling with, but I do know 
that uh, sometimes it can feel very lonely and isolating. So what we can do in our own home is um, make it as uh, warm and cozy and, and do the things that we know that studies have shown will help us increase the serotonin and dopamine and decrease them and the norepinephrine and the adrenaline. And so what I encourage you to do is to make sure you have a live plant in every room. It, uh, it really does make a difference. Plus it gives you something to do as far as tending them. And if you're not a green thumb, which I was not until recently, there are several apps you can download. You can take a picture of that plant and it will tell you what it is, what it lacks, what you need to do. So I think uh, in today's uh, modern world, anybody can be a green thumb. So I encourage that. Secondly, think about your uh, lighting in your rooms. Um, uh, try to do lamp light if possible, and if not, just change your bulbs to a soft hue. They do say, like I said, studies show that the yellow hue is much more um, inviting and, well, more effective in, in decreasing depression. Also, uh, think about what you're smelling and try to get some warm, um, inviting smells uh, like the jasmine or the lavender. Get you a diffuser if you don't have one or scented candles. And then, um, oh, when I was talking about plants, I didn't mention fresh cut flowers. Treat yourself. When you go to the grocery store or wherever, get yourself a bunch of flower, a uh, bouquet of flowers and uh, put them in the room that you're spending the most time because that really can help. I want to close with one of my favorite quotes by Victor Hugo, and it is that laughter is the sun that drives winter from the human face. Laughter is the sun that drives winter from the human face. I just think that's very powerful. So try your best to find a reason to laugh today. And I know during different seasons of our life, that can be more challenging. But you know, whether you want to watch TikTok, you know, that's the new craze that I've recently started <laughs> enjoying. Old sitcoms, not, well, I don't know if I Love Lucy was considered a sitcom, I guess so. Um, sometimes we watch those at our day respite program, you know, like uh, The Honeymooners, the classics like I Love Lucy, um, and the modern ones. You know, there's just a lot of funny stuff you can watch or um, call a good friend that you know has a good sense of humor. We need to learn to laugh at ourselves. Just find a reason to have a good belly laugh because that definitely, um, you know, helps uh, decrease all of those, um, what I call negative, I know they serve a purpose, but uh, neurotransmitters and hormones. Um, but I think that is it for today. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me, especially if you're a caregiver in Union County. Again, the number is in the description. And if you're not in Union County, North Carolina, please reach out to your area agency on aging or your local council on aging. And if they don't provide the same services we do, I'm sure they can put you in touch with someone uh, who will be there to support you. Uh, that is it. I hope everyone has a wonderful day.